Welcome back to Over 50 Chiefs fans. I just had to stop and delete what I started to record because it was full of so many inappropriate words and I just I, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep this, you know I'm trying to keep this on a certain level. Those people that, that know me know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm trying to I'm trying to keep from doing something that's going to cause me trouble down the road. But I just want to wring Steve Spagnuolo's neck. I just watched this fool's press conference from a day ago, and they were talking to him about the defense, and he's like, "Well, you really don't know what you have when you start the season until you get to about week four. And, you know, this is the same, all of us coaches agree. And then when you have injuries, you know, sometimes you don't know until week seven. Okay, moron, we're three and four. Newsflash to good old Steve or Spags or whatever the heck he wants to call himself. You should have this figured out. Now, someone made a comment saying it's not coaching, it's the players. I'm not going to absolve the players of this. Okay, Chris Jones looks like he looks like he took a looks like he takes some plays off, and you just kind of sort of whiffs at people. But let's go back to what Spag said. So, okay, it takes four weeks to figure out what you got. Okay, it didn't take the Cardinals four weeks. It didn't take the Packers four weeks. It didn't take the Buccaneers four weeks. Um, it took us a lot longer than four weeks, and as far as I'm concerned, we still don't have it figured out yet. Um, if we ever had the team that we could get things figured out on, they're coming to Arrowhead. Of course, I probably should not have said that, but it's already out there. I can't go back and take it back. But this fool, and I'll put the video in the description section so you can watch it yourself. But he actually says this stuff. I mean... At some point in time, I mean, when are you going to say, I got to do a better job? How about that? How about a little honesty? So just, you know, someone, you know, made the comment about, you know, it's the players, you know, it's not the coaches. Well, I mean, players can only do so much. I mean, we've seen them go back and forth between, you know, Sorensen and Thornhill. I don't think they like Thornhill, but they've seen that. Sorensen isn't you can't you can't trust him back there, especially by himself, because he'll get lost in the backfield and then somebody will be streaking down the field free for a touchdown. So they've gone back to Thornhill. Um he really wants to get Traverius Ward back, he said in this conference. I'm like, why? I mean I mean you might as well put it you might as well just somehow erect a fitted sheet and line it up at cornerback because it would have a lot better chance of covering anything than Charvarius Ward. I mean, I'd rather see Rashad Fenton out there. A good question was asked. I think it was, uh, I think it was Adam Tyker. Um, I'm probably saying his name wrong. Uh, I think he's, uh, I think he's with the Kansas City Star. Um, asked him about Nick Bolton and Willie Gay and. Steve Spagnuolo said, yeah, we're trying to get them out there more. Okay, um, I know Willie Gay was injured for a little bit, but what what's the big holdup here? I mean, it, it sure looks like you can't, you can't get enough of Ben Neiman, okay? And I've already gone off on Ben Neiman in another video, so I'm not going to do that. But, I mean, why not put Willie Gay out there? He had a heck of an interception, and... The defense needed to do something, and at least they did something finally. I mean, of course, the game was already gone by then. But So that's my rant on Spags. Now I want to address all the little Brett Veach wannabes out there that say, oh, just go get Dar Darius Slate. Trade for Darius Slate. Big play Slate. Problem solved. How you going to pay him? Have you looked at the man's contract? You're going to have to unload a big contract. And I'm sorry, but I don't think anybody wants Frank Clark. 
And I got some news on Frank Clark. I'll get to that in a second. But you can't, I mean, you got to bring in Slay. You have to absorb his contract. The Chiefs don't have that. Now, that got me on an interesting little a little thing here. So I just want to just, I want to read off some names to you. And I had to write them down. But um, I'm just going to read a few of these. But these are some players that the Chiefs have brought in. Now, these are mostly free agents, okay? But just listen to some of these names, and it makes me a little weary about wanting to bring anyone in. Chester McLaughlin. How about Captain I Can't Not Jump Off Sides? I cannot remember how many times I saw that fat piece of garbage get flagged for offsides. Oh, my goodness. And those of you that hated Marty Schottenheimer's defense back in the day, boy, I bet you wish you had even a fraction of that thing now. Okay, here we go. Chester McLaughlin, Bam Morris, Kendrell Bell. Eric Winston, Peyton Hillis. Oh, there's a good one. Yeah, remember him? Yeah, we we were genius enough to bring him in. Um, let's see here. Uh, I can't even read my handwriting. Um, uh, Dante Robinson. Um, oh, Darrell Rivas. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Um, oh, Matt Castle. How do I forget about Matt Castle? Yeah, he's going to save the day at quarterback. I mean, you know, this is what I would like some of our fans to consider when they say let's just go get people think about that list and I could have gone on more I mean I don't know if I mentioned Bam Morris but if I you know if I didn't I mean could have mentioned him um oh, I we'd be here for another 10-15 minutes at least if I went over everybody but I think we should learn from our past mistakes and think about players that we let get away like the Joe Horns the Tony Richardsons that's just a couple off that list. I'm not even going to read the rest of it. And yes, I know it's stuck in my back. I don't give a crap right now. Um, you know, we're going to have to ride with what we got. And as coaches, it's their job to figure out how to scheme, how to blitz. This is the, oh, the other thing that got me in Spag's little thing. And this is only about a two-minute clip, but I don't have the technology of piecing it all together but he said it, it, we're just we're still trying to figure some things out really wow big news flash there he said but a lot of people are running running on us on third down okay how and how is that different from when they might run on other downs i mean okay you don't think that they might try to mix it up you might have a plan for that you know so our goal is to try to get them in a down situation where we know we have to pass and we can pin our ears back. Okay, well, if that's your strategy, um, newsflash for you, it hasn't been working very well. But I think I have beat that horse enough, so I'm going to get off of that. Um, some positive possible news here is, you know, we all know Frank Clark's been, you know, Uzi Clark. He's been going through all his stuff with his, you know, two arrests, you know, in Los Angeles. There's a little bit of closure on him. He now knows that January 17th, that's his upcoming court date. So now maybe Frank Clark can at least, you know, when I mean, you're getting paid that much money, you should be able to put stuff aside anyway. I mean, that you, you've got to have that component built into your DNA when you're getting paid the kind of money he's getting paid. But maybe Frank Clark will start playing better. Um, you know, Michael, Michael Dan is looking pretty good for, you know, a fifth round pick. I mean, he's not a beast by any means. But, guys, we're just going to have to roll with what we got. But it's going to come down to coaching. And Spags needs to get it together. And I'm sorry, but his conference did not instill any confidence in, in me in the least bit. I mean, if I had any kind of football background, I'd submit a resume just to see what would happen. I mean, you know, if, he, if they lose to the Giants, somebody's got to get fired. they got to be. I mean, we can't lose the Giants. I mean, the Giants are without Kenny Galladay for the game. He's already ruled out. No Saquon Barkley. I mean, look, I, I, I you know, I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm at a loss. I'm truly speechless. I mean, it's just, I mean, so many things have just got me just sort of amped right now. But um, I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Maybe, uh, who is there somebody that I left off my list? Um, I know there's got to be someone I'm 
leaving off of here. Um, I know there's another tackle that, uh, besides Eric Winston, I can't think of right now off the top of my head. But is there anybody else that, uh, you know, I left off the list of people that we either, you know, went and got, you know, or picked up in free agency that were complete and total utter wastes of time, a.k.a. busts? Put them in the comments section. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. A lot of you have been doing that, and I appreciate it. I'm slowly, you know, getting closer to 250. That's my goal. You can get to 250. I can get to 300 and then upwards from there. Uh, if you like the video, like the video. Um, share this video with your friends out there. And probably sometime tomorrow, um, I will have my self calm down and I will do a sort of a preview video for the Giants. Hopefully I won't say the name Spags or Spagnola during that video. Uh, but until then, please do all those things that I just asked you to do. If you wouldn't mind, you know, subscribing, that would really, really help. And until tomorrow, um, take care of yourselves and uh, hope for the best. Later.